last major item of her ladyship's inheritance, is up for sale. Oh, I expected as much, sir. Death duties took the bulk of Lord Avon's estate, and there simply wasn't the cash to meet them. The proceeds of the sale of the country house proved insufficient. This left the jewellery. For the purposes of probate, the emeralds were valued at uh, 100,000 pounds. But what they'd fetch in the open market, and especially abroad, could be very much more. The treasury is having a new appraisal made. I see, sir. Now, her ladyship has already received an offer for an undisclosed amount from an American source. But the treasury has very wisely refused to grant her an export permit. Well, has she received any bids in England, sir? On several. The most generous was an offer of... Uh, £125,000, which she turned down. Now, this only serves to confirm my belief that Her Ladyship intends to live abroad, outside the Stirling area, and to dispose of the emeralds in defiance of the Treasury claim. This, of course, we're determined to prevent. Well, if I may ask, sir, exactly where are the emeralds now? Reputedly in her hotel here in London, in the safe. And while legally she's entitled to keep them in a shoebox or on a napkin, if she so desires, I should like you to confirm their whereabouts. Well, is that also? Eh, uh, no. Lady Avon has booked a plane passage for the French Riviera the day after tomorrow. And while we take every precaution to make sure that the emeralds are not with her, one never can be sure. You'll be on the same plane, Benson, and prepare to stay in France for a few days. Yes, sir. Oh, I realize that this interferes with your holiday plans. <laughs> Well, that's all right, sir. Where were you going? Well, I had thought of Cornwall, sir. Ah, the cannon's regular and the lady's slipper. Well, I had thought of looking in on the Friars' experiments. <laughs> well, I must say I admire your full devotion for everything you do. Tramping the countryside on every holiday, sort of uh, pollinating as you go. I beg your pardon, sir? That's probably what makes you a good policeman. Ah, tea. There. Ah. Now, getting back to the case, I think we must assume that Lady Avon may have a confederate who might try and smuggle the emeralds past the customs and deliver them to her in Cannes. I see, sir. The important thing is that the emeralds should not leave the country, but if by any mischance they do, you'll have to bring them back with or without Lady Avon. I understand. Oh, and sir. Yes, Benson? Well, considering the attention that Lady Avon and her jewels have received from the press, don't you think we can expect that well, half the thieves of England and some of the continent's sharpest talent will take this opportunity to try to nab them. It's a point well taken, Inspector. How many men do you want? Oh, just a couple, sir. Oh, do you think that'll be enough? You know, there's always a grim possibility that before this thing's over, someone may have tried to slit her ladyship's lovely throat. <laughs> Good morning, Inspector Benson. Hello, Ives. Uh, can I help you, Inspector? Ives, uh, let's eliminate the inspector just for now. Hmm? Oh, uh, yes. Ives, I understand you have Lady Avon's emeralds in safekeeping. I'd like to see them, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm afraid, sir, that's up to Mr. Saunders. It is his responsibility. Uh... I've already spoken to Mr. Saunders. Hmm? Oh. In that case, of course, would you come in? There it is, sir. You know, this safe has been with us for 80 years. Oh, how long have the emeralds been with you, Ives? Only five days, sir. You see, Mr. Saunders warned her ladyship that we could not accept the responsibility. But she insisted upon keeping them here. <laughs> There we are, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I help you? I doubt it extremely. How about Morgan and Linnet? I'm here to appraise the Avon necklace for the treasury. I'm afraid your suspicions were misplaced, Inspector. These are the Avon Emeralds. Mmm, delicious. 
delicious. I don't know why everyone doesn't have caviar for breakfast. <laughs> don't you, dear? Absolutely jammed with vitamins. Would you care for anything else, milady? Hmm. Some more caviar, please. Certainly, milady. I do hope you're going to have enough money to pay the hotel bill. Oh, I expect so. After all, after tomorrow, I won't need any more pounds, will I? Tell me, Aunt Catherine, how many seasons have you spent in Cannes? Well, it's rather hard to remember, dear. I should have to work it out by husbands. Let me see, the last one loathed the sunshine. The one before that soaked it up like a fig. Your Uncle Alfred, though, of course, that was much, much earlier. Alfred could take the sun or leave it alone. Let me see, after him, there was Michael. Oh, no, I wasn't married to him. Well, all in all, dear, I should say about a dozen. Husbands or seasons, darling. Oh, Gwendolyn. <laughs> I wonder if I shall like it there. Well, it's a charming villa, dear, and the agent says the servants are very good. I shall know how true that is tomorrow. But I promise you, if they're not perfect treasures, I'll have them all changed before you come. I'm a respectable, hard-working man, and a teetotaler as well. What's going on here? What are you doing to poor Bowles? His name isn't Bowles, my lady. It's Fletcher. And he's a convict on license. Oh, it's you. Persecution, my lady. I'm sure Mr. Saunders wouldn't employ any servant without the very best of references. Four convictions for robbery, two for breaking and entering, three for loitering with intent to commit a felony. That's a lie. It was only two. Give him half a chance and he'd steal the gold leaf off the cross of St. Paul's. Milady, it does appear that I was unaware of certain facts. Take him downstairs and search him, Hodges. Come on. Milady, I wonder if Mr. Saunders and I may have a few words with you. Oh, very well. Come in. This is my aunt, Mrs. Sedley. Darling, this is that detective inspector that was so irksome about my brooch. How do you do, madam? I'm afraid it is I, Milady, who is going to be irksome now. In the matter of your emeralds, Milady. What about them? The management would so much prefer not to have the responsibility of their safekeeping. Would you not consider putting them in a bank vault? I suppose this is your idea, Inspector. Oh, I assure you, milady. I will not put my emeralds in a bank vault. But, milady... It's much more convenient for me to have them in the hotel. Uh, an armed guard could always be supplied to escort them from the bank when you wish to wear them, milady. How do I know when I want to wear them? No, no, it's absolutely absurd. But, milady... I have every confidence in the hotel safe and every confidence in you, Mr. Saunders. Hodges searched the waiter, sir. But he was clean. A pity he looked a likely candidate. One of those people must be a confederate. Well, the trouble is, sir, there are too many suspicious characters around. Yeah. Uh, now tell me, Benson, what was Lady Avon's attitude? How would you assess that? Willful, perverse, determined, extravagant. <laughs> Everything the Treasury is against. Well, she eats caviar for breakfast, sir. Does she now? <laughs> Preferred kippers, myself. Caviar is 30 shillings an answer. Yeah. Well, we should just have to take double precautions to make certain that necklace doesn't leave the country. You can put on another couple of men if you like. Yes, sir. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, put him through. Mm. Yes, Mrs. Saunders. Yes, he's here. What's that? Hold on. The Avon Emeralds were stolen from the safe last night. <laughs> 